Greetings Traveller. The Sun is clearly the brightest object in the solar system with a power output around 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. But what is the darkest place in the solar system? That's what we're going to look at in this week's random astronomy question. Now, with most of these questions, I'll be honest, I go into them kind of thinking I know the answer and use that as a starting point for research before scripting these things. That wasn't the case this week, where my research literally started with Googling the question, partly to check that it wouldn't be a one minute, it's swansy during a power cut, but also to give me an idea what the possible contenders could be. What I wasn't expecting was that the Guinness Book of World Records would have an answer. Not only that, but it would be one that I almost immediately disagreed with. According to Guinness, the darkest object in the solar system is Comet Borelli. Yes, it does look like a blurry chicken drumstick, but it is also a short period comet. We've not covered comets yet on this channel as a major focus, so here's a couple of key points about them. One, they have highly elliptical orbits. This means that at points in their cycle, they are much closer or much further away from the sun with hugely varying speeds and temperatures as a result. Two, they're composed of a mix of rock and ice. As they get closer towards the sun, the ice sublimes into a gas state, producing one of the comet's tails as its orbits. For Comet Borelli, it has an orbital period of 6.85 years, and its distance from the Sun varies from the closest, the perihelion, of 1.3 astronomical units. An astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, to its furthest, the aphelion, of 5.9 astronomical units. This is very close for a comet. Comets are generally considered short periods, if their orbits last below 200 years, so 6.85 years makes this an extremely short period comet. Due to its close proximity, Comet Borelli was targeted by the Deep Space One mission for a flyby in September 2001. During this, Borelli was noticed to have an abnormally dark surface. It is thought that this is either due to a loss of much of its ice, thanks to its close orbit to the Sun, or the accumulation of dust on its surface. It could possibly be both. The darkness of a surface depends on how much light it can reflect. This can be described by the albedo, which represents the fraction of incoming light that a surface would reflect. A perfect reflector would have an albedo of 1, whereas a perfect absorber of light would have an albedo of 0, and so would appear perfectly black. Comet Borelli has regions with an albedo of 0.03, so will only reflect 3% of the incoming sunlight. That is pretty dark, but I can think of two main reasons why the claim of it being the darkest place in the solar system could be disputed. The first reason I disagree with Guinness on this has to do with the distance between Borelli and the Sun. You see, the further away from the Sun you go, the more its light gets spread out. This means that more distant objects will receive less light from the Sun. This intensity works on an inverse square law with the distance. That means that if you double the distance, then the intensity of the light becomes a quarter what it was before treble the distance, and I go slightly out of frame, and the intensity will go down by factor 9. So, whilst Comet Borelli only reflects 3% of the light that hits it from the Sun, it is significantly closer than more distant objects, meaning that they would be hit by much less light and would have less to actually reflect. So if we're out all the way over at Neptune, for instance, then it gets less than 4% the intensity of light that Comet Borelli would. So as long as an object has an albedo below 0.75, then it will be darker than Comet Borelli, based on sunlight alone. So every object in the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud will experience less light than is reflected 
off of the surface of Comet Barati. The second reason that I disagree with the Guinness Book of World Records is that there are places on the moon where sunlight never reaches. Because of the angle of the moon compared to the Earth, there are craters near the north and south poles of it which have never seen sunlight, or at least not in the last two billion years. Now, these craters are not completely dark, as they will get some light from distant stars, but the light intensity in those craters surely has to be lower than the light reflected off of Comet Barati, right? Ah, this can make things more complicated. So far, we've spoken about how bright or dark something is purely in the visible part of the spectrum. But the full spectrum includes radio, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. If we look at pretty much any part of the spectrum, the highest emitter of those ranges will be the sun. In fact, for most of the frequencies, the sun will be the only significant emitter. The only exception to this is this, infrared radiation. Anything with a temperature above absolute zero will emit, so everything in the solar system gives off this type of light. Generally speaking, the further away you go from the sun, the colder the planets, moons, and other objects will be. There are exceptions to this trend, but by and large, it holds. As a result, you might expect that the most distant objects from the sun will be the coldest, and for average temperature, you would be correct. For example, the most distant dwarf planet, Eris, experiences temperatures ranging from minus 217 to minus 243 degrees Celsius. We don't have a huge amount of data on objects that far out in the Oort cloud, so there may well be objects which are cooler within this region of space. There have been places in the solar system measured to be cooler than this though. The coldest measured location, where we haven't artificially cooled it down to achieve that temperature, is the Hermit Crater, near the North Pole of the Moon. It was observed by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter to have a temperature of minus 247 degrees C. That's just 26 degrees above absolute zero. As Hermit is one of the craters that never sees sunlight, this makes it one of the darkest places in the solar system, both in the visible spectrum and in infrared emissions. And for me, even though we may find colder or darker places as we measure more of the solar system in detail, the Hermit crater is a pretty darn good contender for the darkest place in the entire solar system. So, what do you think? Do you agree with Guinness based purely on the reflectiveness of a surface determining the darkness of an object? Or do you think the Hermit Crater should really be recognised as the darkest place in the solar system across the whole spectrum? Let us know down in the comments. Next week, we'll be answering one final question before I go on to my holidays. That is, what's in this box that's been in the background of almost every shot in today's video? In the meantime, here's a video that YouTube's algorithm thinks that you will enjoy. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and until next time, please continue to watch this space. Thank you.